what we discovered is how insulin binds to the surfaces of cells. Insulin is a small hormone in your blood, and on the surface of cells are proteins called insulin receptors. When those two proteins interact, the cells are triggered to take up glucose from the blood. Insulin itself was discovered 90 years ago and started being used as a therapeutic pretty close after that, within a year or two. Um, the structure of insulin was worked out in 1969, but to work out how insulin actually binds to the cell, that scientists have not yet been able to do. The importance is that insulin is a key therapy in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes, and pharmaceutical industry is interested in making insulins that have varying properties, for example, so that people might not have to inject insulin that often, or that they might be able to administer insulins in different ways, or in a third world context, they might be interested in making an insulin that can be stored at um, normal temperatures. So our discovery impacts directly on that. It shows which parts of insulin you can alter, which parts you have to leave the same, and suggests ways in which you could tweak the insulin molecule to generate new properties that would make beneficial therapeutics for patients with both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Yes. What we have here is the insulin molecule. It's quite small, and on here, for comparison, we have the molecule that it binds to on the surface of the cell called its receptor. And what we've been trying to discover is exactly how insulin binds to the receptor and sets up a signaling pathway into the cell that ultimately will control your blood sugar. Um, and what we've worked out is that insulin actually fits in right over there, and we've determined all the atomic interactions that occur between insulin and its receptor. And the challenge for us has been how to make this protein in the quantities that we need, in the purities that we need, um, to be able to do this type of structural work. So after we've made the receptor molecule, we combine it with insulin and we grow crystals. These crystals are very tiny and very fragile, and to be able to get images out of them, we need an extremely intense X-ray source. So for that end, we use the Australian synchrotron, and in particular, their microcrystallography beamline. CSRO started a project to do this in 1991, um, and that work was transferred to the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute of Medical Research in 2007. And a key to the success of this project has been the fact that we've been able to assemble a team of international collaborators drawn from the US, from the UK, and from the Czech Republic, all of whom have contributed to the success of this project.